Hey guys, um, this is really a twofold message. Um, the first part is about our father's business. The second part, it's about don't take it lightly. But the, I'm going to go into the first part briefly and then the second part a little bit at length and then back to the first part. I know it sounds backwards, but it's not. Our father's business, what's he telling you to do? What's he, what's that, what's tugging at your heart? What are you called to do, be? Just do it. Okay, guys? And I'll leave it at that till we get to the end. Because it'll, it'll make sense. Second part is don't take it lightly. So what's he telling you to do? Okay? And this is kind of about the ministry some, but not really, because ministry, when you think about it, Ministers, he said that his ministers will be as a flame of fire. Ministry, look at the end of it. Tree, try. Quit trying. And just be. God wants you to be. What do you want you to do? Where are you not supposed to be? Oh, be obedient. Okay, but that's kind of what this is about. Okay, but the don't take it lightly. So in Matthew 22, read it. And probably weep, honestly. <clears throat> Read the whole thing. What happens at church when they become disobedient? And he's calling us to the wedding. But the second part about that, don't take it lightly, okay? Two stories, they're true stories, and this is why you don't take it lightly. My wife and I were attending a very large, pretty large, Little middle large church. This was our Sunday. We changed it. <laughs> Sorry, spam call. Didn't turn my phone off. Apologize. And this was our typical Sunday. We changed it to where we got off on Sunday, but. You know, my wife wanted to say, you know, we're the facilities people and all this, but really we were just the janitors. I was helping her because she had the contract to clean the church. Well, this would be our Sunday. We would clean. My wife liked me to clean the bathrooms. I mean, it was just not I like to clean too. Cause not really like to, but I mean, just it would, you know, it worked good for us because she was a lot more detailed than some of the other stuff. And then she'd come back in and, you know, foo foo whatever I did. So. 12 toilets, 12 stalls. Okay, I go to the, then we would finish and have to hurry up after service because there was three, literally about 3,000 people, all the mess. And we'd have to hurry because we had to be at a homeless shelter in downtown Dallas. We did this for three years, almost four. And we wanted to start, wanted to start service before five by 4.30 if I could. So we were really pushing it to get everything done, get out the door, get there, pray, prepare. It's very busy, hectic. And when I, one of the times when I got there, I held my hand. I said, in this hand, I got a toilet brush. And in this hand, I got a Bible. So I couldn't get some cleanup messes wherever I go. And then we have to hurry up and get back because if we didn't want to be there too late. After, after, the, after the service at the homeless shelter, and uh, do it again. A busy day. Well, one to Sunday, but one day I was cleaning the church, cleaning the stalls. Somebody came in, I was cleaning one, somebody came in and started using the other one. So I had to wait. So I, well, I got plenty to do. So I go to stock and to uh, paper towels. And I'm just by the sink, and there's this young kid standing in there. Conversation, you know, I kind of had my back turned on, but not totally because I didn't want to be, you know, rude. But I said, Hey, how's your day going? This is what he said. Not good. It was almost an hour long, guys, that I had to minister to this young kid. He had really bad, some kind of horrible kind of cancer. He lost his job because of it. Couldn't afford the insurance, couldn't afford his apartment staying with his sister that had three or four kids, older sister at that. Just the dynamics of that and just, man, he was in tears. 
devastated. Well, you know, nowadays everybody wants to be that minister that is at the mic and has a million people following them and a million commitment cards and they've been to India and all over the world and la 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 la, all the Shazam stuff. Well, let me tell you something about don't take it lightly. Where would this kid have been? If I wouldn't have been there, God, the Holy Ghost didn't lead me. Everything just was a timing thing, you know? Even from the, the guy using the stall in the bathroom. Seemed like a delay, it wasn't. Don't take it lightly. Where would he have been? Let me put this into perspective, okay? Jesus failed math. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. He left the 99 to go after one. Church has got it backwards. We want to go after the 99 million and leave the one. What's the worth of that one soul to God? So don't take it lightly. That's that's one. I've got others too, but I've just got to share this other one with you because I don't want this message to be too long. What I'm doing is it's a helps. I'm ministering to the ministers, but I'm ministering to others. We have a 16 by 70 foot warehouse in an old cotton gin building with a dirt floor, but everything's clean. But I just got some donations of like six cases of adult diapers. So you want them, come get them. I need to get them to the right person though. They also gave you about 100 pairs of really nice dockers. They almost look brand new and some jeans. And, and plus I have a bunch of stuff. The warehouse is packed and I can't get to it all. So if you're in that, if you're that type, if you got a ministry, come down, we'll talk. You know, leave your checkbook at home. That's part of where I'm, where I'm going with this. Just bring change on your dashboard. Buy me a cup of coffee. We'll call it even. This might be for you. Come get some stuff. I've got everything from antiques to signs to furniture to just stuff, clothing to some of it's good. Some of it's, you know, I go through the trash and I'm getting rid of a lot of the trash. I got rid of most of it, but, you know, come on down. We'll talk. The, just email me at jesusisaliveinamerica.com and we'll talk. Come down. I'm going to do it. The reason why I'm doing that on this Father's Day weekend is when I'm starting to open it. But I didn't want to. And people are probably not going to show up. That's okay. Because they're busy. They might. But email me and let's set something up. That's one piece of it. But so. But the don't take it lightly. This is the second part of the don't take it lightly. I mean, I was in seven different buildings, small storages, and I moved to one because of the expense, cut my cost and everything, and I'm doing it by myself. Pretty much. But there's some big ministries that have helped somewhat that are $60 million, one six million million, and a little bitty, some little bitty churches just come on down. But the don't, so I'm not into the numbers game, guys. I'm into where God wants me to be. What do you want me to do, Jesus? Look at my morning prayer. What do, I, what do you want me to do today? So, the second part of don't take it lightly, and I'm sorry to be a little mixed up. Um, and there's a reason why I am. I'll tell you that in a second. But the second part of this, I was in a warehouse. It was a refrigerator box cut, not quite a little bit over half, maybe two thirds. You know, the box was in good shape, but it was just cut, empty. And I had a lot of clothes I was going through. Well, I had a lot of underwear. Sorry to be graphic. And some of it I know where it came from, and I was like, man, some of it I didn't. The Lord spoke to me, he said, I want you to wash all of that. 
and put it in this box. I said, Lord, you know, I'm so busy. I have a lot of other stuff to do. Things that were way more prioritized to me, seemingly. Okay, Lord, I put on a pair of rubber gloves because I don't know where some of this has been. The most of it's clean looking, but still. And I'm going through it. Holding up. Size 42, 48. Who wears that size? Look like a tent. Where's this been? You know, I'm going through it. Guys, it was 20. I used five commercial washers. And, you know, my wife would probably laugh or anybody that does laundry. I just shoved it all in there. It didn't matter, colored, white, whatever. And if it didn't come out, I threw it away. If it came out clean looking and usable, I kept it. Five big commercial washers, guys. I spent like 23 or $25 and quarters. And then I had to buy soap. And I spent a lot of time, a long time doing it. Probably half a day at least. That was a long time. And I'm digging through this box. Or not digging through it, but putting stuff in there and doing all you know the stuff that associated to it. I caught, you know, we all call it praying sometimes, but I was complaining to God. I'm a child of the king. I'm yelling. This should be gold and silver. Then I'm going through a box of dirty underwear. <sighs> but okay, God. And I just left it at that. I changed my heart a little bit, but still complaining. But I, and I shelved it. I filled it up. Filled it up, guys. And I parked it in the corner and sat there for about six months. I didn't even think anything of it. And then there was a, I'm in Dallas, and there's a homeless shelter, and it's in a, man, it's in a horrible, rough place in Dallas. I'm a white, I'm a white boy. I wouldn't go there at night. Six. Probably be roadkill or shot. A really bad neighborhood. It's a lady pastor and she's white. And but, man, they just have some really, really rough people. You can imagine. Pick any major metropolitan area and pick a, you know, a ghetto, pretty much. Well, they were picking up a box truck, sometimes every week, 14 foot box truck. Sometimes they'd bring a trailer and I would fill it up. Nice stuff. You know, generally, I mean, they had uh, gone through and put a lot of effort into it, cleaned the clothes. If they didn't, you know, I, I wasn't going to give away garbage. Not a lot of value, but, you know, all good usable stuff. But full. Well, I made sure the lady's husband was there. It was a husband and wife that were picking it up. And I said, you know what? I'm not going to name her name, but I said, I got a box. Full of used, used underwear, but I've cleaned it all. And I don't know what to do with it. And I was kind of a little embarrassed, even. This is the lightly part, don't take it lightly. Man, her eyes got bigger than my glasses. She lit up. She got a phone and she was excited. Like it's, it's used underwear, you know that. Thinking in my head, you know, once she's on the phone. She just gets off the phone. She said, You don't understand. She said, These homeless people get. A lot of stuff. They always get clothing, you know, shirt, shoes, pants, but they don't get underwear much. Okay, God. There was a reason. There's always a reason. God's always up to something, but that's my, my point is this. If your heart's in this, uh, there's some things that, you know, what I want to do is one, like one of uh, one that's local here in Garland, but, and another one, but. I gave away about 300 backpacks and suitcases to the homeless already. There's homeless encampments by me. There's food pantries, ministries, non-ministries. Just a lot going on, guys. I'm going to minister on the street. I already got one of the food pantries that will allow us to minister right in front. Or we could just go straight to the dirty, ugly, streets where there's a homeless camp i know three of them and every once in a while the police go through and roust them out and throw everything away come on down guys if 
that's your heart. No shame, guilt. If it's not, it doesn't mean you have a bad heart. It just means you, that, you know, that that's why that's the first part of this about our Father's business. So if it, if He's leading you to this, pray about it. Come on down. There's plenty of things, and it might be for your ministry. You want to pick up all these diapers if you know somebody that's you know needs them. Come get them. No cost. Free. That's what I'm saying, guys. There's a just a, but and and I'll end with this. The reason why I'm doing this on Father's Day because I want to be about my father's business. I want to take it lightly. I pray about everything. Do I do I always get it right now? But most of the time, yes. Just because I really really pray a lot through this, and I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this message. Just I don't know, but. I'm challenged right now, guys. I need brain surgery, back surgery, eye surgery, foot surgery, and something internal surgery. Last, less than a year ago, I was kicked out of the hospital because I wouldn't let them bill my insurance company for $500,000. I had two of them diabetic, and I had two really bad infected toes, and the surgeon came in, and we're cutting everything off your whole foot, pretty much, in front of your foot. You'll, you'll be in the hospital for four months. Um, I looked down and said, well, what's wrong with the other three does? You're going to lose them anyhow, blah, blah, blah. I like a side of beef. I didn't realize that I had been praying all night. What do you do when you're in the hospital? You know, I'm sitting in a, pretty much in an emergency case. So, you know, I couldn't sleep. I needed to pray. Everything hurt. The, the infection was in the bone. Guys, look it up. That's not need that's the first line of defense when you're at the hospital, just good. I still got ten of my toes. But I had to fight the system for over a month, change doctors. I'm not anti doctor, that's not what I'm saying. I but just but man, I was on antibiotic for fourteen weeks. Two insurances, my copay was five grand just for the medicine. Brutal. You I'm not talking about a little pill and you take you know, for 10 days, I'm talking about a bottle, you know, that's sticking in an IV that goes straight to your heart. It was a, and they were like, don't, don't get, don't get it dirty, don't sweat it. I'm like, I'm Texas, you know, I'm walking to your car. You sweat walking from your front door 20 feet to your car. And then you're still sweating because it hadn't cooled off yet. Don't sweat. What? Okay. What do you want me to do? Hide in a cave? But anyhow, so, and then I didn't realize it, that, that I had had some four years ago. I had had some brain strokes and the diagnosis, I couldn't even walk, guys. Literally, I would fall just standing there or walking. I'm like, man, God, this isn't going to work. What if I'm at Walmart and you see how people drive? They look at you like they're about ready to run you over anyhow because you cut in front of them. Maybe I'll be roadkill if I fall and nobody will see me. Drive through there so fast and you know, this ain't gonna work. Diagnosis, moderate to severe brain loss. And I looked at it and I said, what do you mean loss? And they said, oh, they showed me MRIs, I'd had three. This part's dead, this part died, this part, you know. Dead, what do you mean? What do I do? They gave me the dumb look, and they were very good. He was a very good doctor, very professional. His staff was great, and it was an awesome, you know, experience. Except for being there, they took good care of me. And they said, "There's nothing you can do about it." Okay. The regular doctors like take a B12 and a, an aspirin. I'm like, thanks for the Walmart advice, you know. But so. That's why I said I was a little out of it. So Elvis has left the building, guys. This time I've had some more. And I'll have a card in front of me calling, you know, doctor or whomever. Take me 10 minutes. I'll call the wrong area code. I'll call the fax number. I'll, oh, that's an eight instead of a three. Pretty challenged. So come on down and let's just talk. Pray about it. Do it. Make sure that you're about your father's business. I don't want you to do anything that just out of guilt or shame or some, I'm feeling some phony obligation. 
No, no, nothing attached here. There's no chains attached here. There's no strings attached. You need stuff, come on down. Whatever. I'm going to pray about it too, though. I'm not you know, 100% saying, you know, we'll connect. What I'm saying is let's connect some of these dots. I'm being bought up by this place. Email me at Jesus is alive in America. Dot com. And come on down. We'll talk, we'll set up a meeting. It's local here in Garland, Texas. It's not that I could use you as help. There's a lot of people that need help. So it's not me. I, I'm just going to kind of direct and administer, and there it is, and just stuff. But it's just a tool to get into their world. But we can do anything from old fashioned, just street preaching right on the street, to just delivering stuff to people, just whatever. Help pick it up. Maybe it's your ministry that we've got to help. Okay? Yeah, I still got another minute. Oh, just one more minute. When I very first started this, this lady came. Two stories, real quick. Bought a pub table for 40 bucks and they gave me. She didn't even pay for it. She, she paid for it, but she hadn't even paid for it yet. She's just broke into tears, just crying, telling me her story. It was her, it was her birthday. No, it was her mom's birthday. When her mom was 12 years old, she watched her mom brutally murdered. Watched her brutally murdered. Saw it with her own eyes. Okay? A very good story. Man, she, they were real, real solid tears. Some lady I didn't even know, guys, just walked in this simple transaction. Don't take a lightly part. God didn't make it lightly. He's trying to reach this young lady. Just recently, and I just delivered them a couple days ago. I was at the scrapyard. Just dropping off some scrap, guys. You don't, you know, going in the window, lines along, you know, normal course of business day, not, you know, we do scrap or whatever, or whatever, you know, wherever you're going, store or wherever. Normal day. I had a suitcase in my car that I was gonna, you know, was destined to go somewhere else. And the lady looked at you, man, it's a nice suitcase, what are you going to do with it? And she proceeded me to tell her some of her life story, how she was, you know, poor when she was a kid, and they just had a rough life. She was a 40-year-old, maybe 45-year-old woman, but she looked 80. You can tell she had a very rough life. She said, can I have it? I said, well, not this one. I said, but I got some more. But I was so busy, and so many just different things that came up. Medically, and you know, I got a hole in my toe. I have to fix all the way to the bone. The, it's just, yeah. and all this other stuff that's going on. And so, it took me about a week to get there, but I brought four of them. Really nice ones, guys. I cleaned them. The ones that weren't clean, they were some were just dusty, but I made sure they were cleaned, zippers worked, you know, all that stuff. Man, I saw her today or yesterday. I went to the scrapyard again, and uh, she just, man, she, she looked different. She was a, kind of almost a glow. Thank you so much. You could tell she was sincere from the bottom of her heart, so that's what I'm telling you. You know, forget the million. What if it's just the one? I'm going to get a chance to minister to her. I just, you know, I'm not going to do it and make other people wait in line while I do that. I'll get a chance to, an opportunity to do it. The doors already started to open on this one. I didn't open it, God did. But there's also some, like I said, there was one that did like $60 million last year. And I was paying a guy 200 bucks to haul a load every, every week to him. About $100 to $1,000 worth of just stuff. But it was cleaned or, you know, it, it was just because they had a thrift shop, but and the amount of labor that's in it, in that. Now, my, yeah, on my side, yes, too, but just even in just having the shop and the storage and the place and the retail, the, what are you intense, guys? I can't do it. I'm not going to do it anyhow, that part. But get you the stuff. Come on down. Email me at jesusisaliveinamerica.com because, guys, we got to pitch in on this deal. Just look around. 
the world's come to on this. You don't have to politicize it. Just look around, guys. Whether it's businesses, churches, or government, man, just evil, the greed, the man, just the stuff. People are doing one of two things. They're turning to the cross. I'm gonna end with this. Or they're turning from the cross. The ground is always level at the foot of the cross. Come on down, guys. If you're a minister, I've got a place where we're going to minister from. A table where we're going to have flyers and just different things. I mean, I'm pretty open, guys. It's just going to be real open. Downright old-fashioned street preaching. Time never comes through the doors. But wherever we go, or maybe it's you. Come down and load up your car, your truck, whatever. Or, tell, you know, I'm going to have to pray about it because I want it to go to the right place. I want people to just come get a bunch of stuff that I, you know, I don't, I want to be a good steward over this. So, that's why I said it's not 100% guaranteed. It's, you know, come on down, let's talk, pray together, and see what God has in store. Be about our Father's business. If that's you, because I've got three prison ministries that need some help, homeless shelters, pantries, some small churches, big churches, just a lot of stuff that needs to get connected. I'm not, you know, I'm not that big, guys. I'm not, and so these big churches, I mean, I get them swallowed up in a little bit of stuff that I give them. That's not the point. The point is, like I said, the math that Jesus failed. Maybe we need to leave the 99 and go after that one. I don't know. You know? Come on down. If you're local or just this is a personal invite, thank you for your time. Bless you. Have a great, wonderful day. Email me at JesusIsAliveInAmerica.com. I'm sorry, JesusIsAliveInAmerica at gmail.com. Thank you and have a wonderful day.